Okay, in this video, I wanted to walk you through what to expect for lab four. All right, so lab four, we are modifying the two-bit adder circuit that you did in lab three. So hopefully you saved that, but if you didn't, it won't take long to hook that back up. And so you start with this two-bit adder, and then we realize what we want to do here is modify this circuit so it can do both addition and subtraction. And so what we're going to have in here is a control line. I don't remember what we call that. Let me look in the lab just a second. Um, maybe it's called M for mode. All right, I'm not seeing it. So I'm going to call this, this uh, input M. So if I make M equal 1... For the, for the mode button. If M is equal to one, I want to do a subtract. And if M is equal to zero, I want this to just do a regular add function. Okay, so the lab itself, when you, when you read the write-up on lab four, it uses exclusive or to help you do the process of converting the B input to two's complement. All right, and so one way to think of that is you need to flip all the bits and add one. All right, so if I think about an exclusive or function, all right, let me go down here and, and draw that. Here's an exclusive or. I'll color it in. Okay, if I make the mode equal to one, all right, if I apply a zero into the input, all right, then because zero exclusive or with one is a one, the zero gets flipped to a one. All right, let's try it for a one. If the input, remember this is the input line, this is the mode line. Okay, so if the input is a one and the mode line is also a one, one exclusive or with one is a zero. And you see the bit was flipped. In both cases, the bit was flipped when M is equal to one. All right, and so if M is equal to zero, I'll let you do the logic on that. If M is equal to zero, it won't flip the bits, all right? So what we know is to find two's complement, we need to flip the bits and add one, all right? And so we're gonna get to that in just a second. We're going to add one using the carry in bit on a full adder. All right, so let me get started here. This is a truth table showing the operation of this circuit. All right, so I have this set up with several input combinations. I haven't given them all, but basically what we're looking at is two different modes. When m is equal to zero, we're doing addition. So that's the upper half of the table. All right. So everything in here is add, and everything in here is subtract, all right? And so what we're noticing here is if I take uh, the two-bit adder input, all right? So notice the way I have this circuit. A0, the A lines, I'm gonna use a different color. The A lines go into the two-bit adder, but the B lines, get manipulated through the exclusive or, and they depend on the mode. All right, so I'm gonna make two different inputs. One is the switch configuration for M and A and B. All right, and the other is what actually gets put into the two-bit adder because the B input goes through that exclusive or array. All right, so I line it all up, all right, I do, you know, A is equal to zero, zero, B is equal to zero, zero. A is equal to zero, zero, B is equal to zero, one. I go through all the input combinations with the mode set to zero. And then I do the same thing down here with the mode set to one. All right, I'm just going through these input combinations and there's 16 of them. All right, so you can follow all the, the different versions here. All right, so the interpretation I would get then is Looking at this line over here, let me let me clear this color. All right, so what I have here is the interpretation is zero 
which is this right in here, plus zero, which is the red bits here, is equal to, and what we know from addition is we want that to be equal to zero. All right, and so we can go through the operation of the adder. This is the circuit we built last time. And so this should all work out. This gives you the correct answer for two bit addition. All right, so what I wanted to do next is look what happens when you connect this circuit exactly as it's written and you don't do anything with the C out. All right, we're gonna fix that in a second. You don't do anything with the C out, you get this type of result. So I wanted to talk about that. All right, so the, the idea here is what we're trying to implement is, um, let me clear the color so I can talk about it. I'll just clear a few of them. All right, so what I want to do here is I want to go with the blue zero, which is right here, minus zero, all right? So the reason I put this in the second column is that we need two's complement to represent negative zero. I agree, negative zero, that's a, that's a trivial case, but we can still do that. Negative zero would be you flip all the bits and then you add one, all right? So we're doing that with the full adder circuit with the adding one part is being done with the full adder circuit and the flipping of the bits is done with the exclusive OR. All right, so what I have is zero minus zero and of course the interpretation of that result should be that I get zero. And the point is, unless you modify the exclusive, I'm sorry, the, the two bit full adder circuit, this bit is wrong, all right? It's not zero, all right? It's one zero zero. All right, so I'm gonna unhighlight that for now, but keep that in mind. The bit position and the carry position is wrong for the subtraction part. Okay, let's do another one, all right? Let's say I wanted to do, let me clear the colors. Let's say I wanted to do zero minus one, so zero plus a negative one. All right, so zero is right here. All right, and then I represent negative one using two's complement. All right, so I take negative, I take one, which is right here. I flip all the bits, so instead of zero, one, I have one, zero, and then I add one. I do that using the full adder, okay? So these inputs right here, these five signals are used in the full adder circuit. So what I know is this is, this first one is two plus zero, that'd be two, plus one would give me three. So the full adder circuit, when you apply the signals, that's what's going on in this column. This is just full adder lot truth table. I get zero, one, one. Okay, and zero, one, one is not the right answer. Okay, because if I wanted to represent negative one in three bit two's complement, okay, I would take one, I'd flip all the bits, and I would add one. All right, so you see I'm off in this bit position. So I'm gonna highlight that in, uh, TCU purple, you know, that's a bad color. So that's a zero, that one's off and that one's off. All right, let's do one more. Let's do two minus three. All right, so clearing the colors here to do two minus three. All right. Okay, so in blue, two. It's right here. Negative three, I represent negative three by flipping all the bits, so three is, is zero, one, one. So if I flip these two bits, that would be zero, zero. All right, so that's why I have that. Put that in red. And then I add one, 
using the full adder. Okay, now I'm going to apply the truth table for the full adder. The full adder would say 0 plus 2 plus 1. That would be 3. All right, but what answer am I expecting for minus 1? Again, for minus 1, what I'm expecting is all 1s, just like uh, the previous case. So yet again, this bit is flipped. All right, so you'll notice a pattern here. You should go through this. When you build the circuit as is, everything looks like it's working right in terms of representing the output. It's just that when you get negative results, all right, in the case where it's doing subtraction, the most significant carry or the carry out is flipped, all right? And so how would we fix the case where the carry out is flipped when we're in the subtraction mode? Well, I think it's similar to what we do here. We have the, we know the mode is controlled by the M signal. All right, so you can modify this circuit. All right, the hint is do something similar to the output as you did for the input to flip the bits only, only when the mode is subtraction. All right, so hopefully that helps you. I think the pre-lab is relatively straightforward because it's just asking you to convert numbers to two's complement, and you should be pretty well-versed in that by now. But if you aren't, if you're feeling stuck, if you're not recognizing what to do, uh, you need to talk to me, Wilson. We can talk in the lab. All right, hopefully this helps. Thanks.